I practice, the worse I get. Yes, this is the Cranky Harpist stream. It's Monday morning. So I'm still doing the Le Rivier exercise. it a little slower. My sight reading abilities haven't improved. Um, where are we going? To the B? What? That starts on the B. Hold on a minute. Why is your hand there, you imbecile? I'm trying to bring out the melody in the Damas Etude too. at the Le Rivier exercise and writing the names of the chords and what Roman numeral chord they are. I'm trying to count letters in my head. Hold on. What a nasty looking piece. This is a Bosha attitude it. that I decided to look at for sight reading practice. You can see that the first finger is marked X and what we usually call second finger is marked as 1. This is an antiquated style of writing for the harp. It helps to count out loud. Even if you do sound very silly. Spend a lot of time working on that one chord, arpeggiating. It's important to get all the fingers at the same volume and the same length of note. Make sure that fourth finger is snapping right into your palm, which I'll talk about in a bit. Time later. When doing those scales, in order to move quickly, I need to make sure that all of my fingers come in. This is a piece in Dorian mode called A Place I Can Return Home To from Final Fantasy IX. It's in I want it to come in flat, so I'm going very not slowly curved, with it. Not half in. You want it to come in flat. Like. Just as I said, you want it to come in flat. Bingo! That's progress.
Monday I had my theory lesson and my practical hat lesson. I'm actually warming up with the cadenza again there. And look, my thumb is a little bit higher than, than yesterday. Still working on that middle section of Pavan with those horrible chords. fourth finger exercise here. I'm actually using Henrietta Renier's arrangement of Premier Arabesque. But when I learn that piece I'll use the Salzedo arrangement as the fingering is different. At my lesson this is the feedback I got. Make that loud, uh, fourth finger louder on the Damas. Pavan needs more work. Fisca is a little bit more dynamic so there's less space between those arpeggios. All in all, it was a very positive lesson, though. My teacher is very encouraging. Now we're working on a different fingering for the Larivia exercise. This is three, one, two, four. ahead when sight reading still catches me out. Now I realized in the Fiskars that those arpeggios, they want you to do it in the right hand rather than switch hands over because they want you to progress as a harpist with crossing under quickly. But I don't think I can get it. the demasitude again, this time with the metronome. I'd like to speed it up a little bit before next Wednesday. getting softer of technical terms for the ABRSM grade contando, 5 theory colando contando contando sorry hard to read ah facile con futo wild and fast strict paper so, look at how I distracted myself by watching Yolanda Kondonasi. While watching this, I noticed that throughout, even in the upper octaves, her forearms remain parallel to the ground. She is incredibly talented and always super composed when playing. Last page of the Haydn, the fifth variation. I've got a little more fluent on the La Rivier exercise by the end of the week. Keeping a steady tempo. looking at inversions leave the common note we are going to the six. and roman numeral chords the six is we're doing well, one six a, two five one it's a 
One of those. Or, or, or. These will come in handy when trying to play things by ear, because once I get them in my fingers, I'll just be able to use them instead of randomly plucking with my left hand. I don't. A D, F. If you haven't noticed already, I put little golden vines around Cecil's column to dress him up a little bit. Oh, Poopingtons, I don't think that's right. I've got to pedal up. Here I practiced improvising and playing with tone. It's really important to understand the different sounds your fingers can make from using more or less flesh on the string, angle, different dynamics, the shape of your fingers as you play. where if I make a mistake I can resolve it into the right note or copy it to make it sound deliberate. B major or B flat major or G minor. Back to the music theory. But the F... Oh! This is the kicker gang. This is the kicker. If you notice there's a random sharp in the key signature where it shouldn't be that'll tell you if it's a major or a minor. So here I'm talking it's about harmonic scale minor scale. Okay? That's how we know. Raised leading tone. The leading Everybody. tone is the seventh I'm tone. I'm going to go really slow on that. Because I want to make sure that finger comes in and that I'm placing with my thumbs higher. We don't want to mess this up. Give you know? it three guesses. I also got my first planned gig for this year at a retirement home next month. Very excited about that. So here we're in the ninth hour of practice, arpeggiating our pavan. going to play through the Haydn in its entirety.
That was the single most painful experience of my life listening to that. Saturdays we do jazz improv play along. It's a way to relax and practice ear training. It's pretty much one big game of guess that key signature. Hayden is an absolute state. But I think it's a bit late now. Overall, not a bad week. Let's try harder next week and good luck to me on my exam next Wednesday. Grade 6, here we come! <laughs> 